Richard, the so-called anthropic principle that deals with the fine-tuning of the universe is used by physicists, philosophers, theologians to advance their own conceptions of the world. How do you see it? Well, I see it as a rather simple self-consistency argument. Um, inflation says that we have a multiverse, that we have many different universes that are formed out of one inflating universe, gives birth to many inflating universes. So there's the possibility for the laws of physics in these different universes to be, to be different. So you have to live in a universe that's consistent with the development of intelligent beings because that happened in our universe. So it's a self-consistency argument. And the anthropic principle says we may live in a special place in the multiverse. There may be universes that are not habitable. Likely. But we wouldn't live in them sure. because uh, we have to live in one that, that's <laughs> capable of intelligent life. So in the inflationary scenarios where you can explore many different laws of physics in many different universes, uh, the anthropic principle seems uh, natural. Um, some physicists might like to eventually explain the ratio of the mass of the electron to the mass of the proton. You'd get a Nobel Prize <laughs> for this. But um, maybe in different universes, there are different ratios for this. And so you'd have to understand the, the details of the vacuum quantum state that started mm -hmm. that universe to understand that. Uh, and we may get a prediction for our particular universe, or we may just get a statistical prediction from our theory of everything mm -hmm. when we finally get it. Um, so um, that's the situation that the anthropic principle um, uh, tells us. That they're so some would say that n nothing can follow from that because it's a so-called tautology, that it, it's self-consistent, but it, it, it's circular in its, its reasoning. But, but uh, others say that maybe that, that even though that may be true, that, that there's some things we can learn from it. Yes, I think there are some things you can learn from it. For example, we observe that the dark energy today has a certain energy density. Um, if that energy density were very much higher, um, the galaxies wouldn't have formed in our universe. If that density was negative or lower, the universe would have negative, the universe would have recollapsed, again, making it difficult for intelligent life. So we seem to be in the habitable zone for this uh, dark energy. And so their super strength theory is telling us that there may be many different possible values for this to take. And so there may be many different universes with uh, different values of this dark energy. And we simply have to be in one of the ones that would allow galaxies to form and allow intelligent life to that conform. That sounds like we're very special. Well, we are special in the sense that there might be lots of universes that were uninhabitable. It would seem that most of them would be. Most the of them might majority. be. But we already observe this to be the case. I mean, we're on the Earth. The Earth is habitable. Pluto doesn't appear to be habitable. So there's maybe lots of planets. We're not living in the center of a star that's too hot. We're not living right at the beginning of the Big Bang. So within the multiverse, we have to live in one of its habitable zones. Mm -hmm. And we can learn something about, um, uh, for example, the the maybe why the dark energy has this particular value that we see, uh, maybe an accident of uh, the fact that uh, uh, that's a habitable, it's within the habitable zone, and there could be values of it that are different elsewhere. But does the specialness that we now have uh, a fight against the Copernican principle, which seems to have been a, being applied in almost every sphere of, of human existence? Well, I've written on the Copernican principle and what you can learn from it. The Copernican principle is very important. It says that your location is not special. So mm -hmm. when you combine this with the anthropic principle, the anthropic principle says, yes, in the multiverse, you may live in a special place because it has to be habitable. But the Copernican principle tells you that out of all the places for intelligent observers to live, you're likely to live in one of the non-special places. Huh. And, and why is that? Because there's many, many non-special places for those intelligent observers to live, and only a few special places. So you're simply likely to be in one of the many 
non-special places. It's why you're likely to be born not on January 1st. <laughs> Are you born on January no, 1st? Of course not. How did I know that? Yeah. Well, there's so many other days right. of the year. Yeah. And you can use this to predict uh, future longevity of your intelligent species and so forth. But this principle is very important. So by combining the Copernican principle with the anthropic principle, which seem superficially to fight each other. Yes. Uh, one saying we're super special, the other saying we shouldn't be special at all, right? Yes, the Copernican principle sort of uh, mitigates some of the specialness that there is in the anthropic principle. But, but, but does it in a, um, in, in, as far as the anthropic principle is concerned, in a, uh, um, a theoretical way because we have no other data uh, of any other place where we're hypothesizing. In, in the Copernican principle in this universe, that's real data. We can look out, we see other yes. galaxies and stars, and we, the we know Copernican we're not The Copernican principle central. gives testable predictions. Uh, I can predict the future, I use the Copernican principle to predict the future longevities of Broadway plays, <laughs> given that when I wrote my paper, uh, the, it was a random time relative to the longevities of these plays. And that worked out, uh, 44 yeah. plays, and 40 of them worked out correct <laughs> within the 95% confidence level, So, and four left to be decided. So that's working out well so far. Um, you can make predictions according to the Copernican principle that are falsifiable. Uh, the anthropic principle, um, the reason we have interest in that is that our theory of inflation, which does make very specific predictions about what the cosmic microwave background should look like and mm -hmm. so forth, um, it does predict in principle that you will make multiple universes. So we have to take that seriously because of the observational data we have in favor of inflation. So then how can these two be combined, anthropic and Copernican? What do we then conclude about our existence? Well, um, we have to live in a habitable place. So we're living in a habitable epoch in the universe when stars are burning right. before the universe is thinned out too much and not at the very early universe and so forth. But our location within that region, we, we do, by the Copernican principle, find ourselves going around an ordinary star in an ordinary galaxy and so forth.